Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a short informative video uh, for the Marijuana Party of Canada initiative uh, to hijack, take over, and operate the MMAR program, which Death Canada uh, wants to abolish and replace with the MMPR program. It's a unique concept. I've been tossing it around for about six months to a year now. And uh, it really has to be done. Uh, the last time I made a push of this was uh, back in December. And uh, it got a lot of interest, but technically very few bites. Okay. Uh, the reality is, is the MMPR program is now six months into their program. And they just published a whole new round of, uh, of uh, revelations of how it's going to operate. And clearly, there is no room there for compassion clubs. Compassion clubs do not exist under the MMPR program. Uh, it's, pharmacies are going to be selling uh, prepackaged marijuana in the form of cigarettes. And you're going to be able to get that at London Drugs somewhere in the next six months. Um, compassion clubs are being phased out. And the reason they're being phased out and the, the vehicle for phasing them out is they're not going to get a license to collect or charge sales tax. Because it's now going to be a taxable item. Uh, under the new rules and regulations... Uh, all packaging has to happen at the grow up and all packaging and breaking of a package is uh, is indictable you can't break a package okay that under these rules now there are lots of examples of how a compassion club can operate under these rules and that's what I'm doing with this video okay uh, all, Compassion clubs are going to get charged with selling narcotics because they have trimmed bud. And for this, I'll use Colorado and California uh, actions that are taken by the federal government. In those two states where it's legal to grow pot, it's perfectly legal to grow pot. It's perfectly legal to cut the crop and hang it upside down and have it dry. But as soon as you take scissors to trim the plant, you're, the trimmers are getting 10 years because you're making a narcotic. okay? And Death Canada considers the bud a narcotic. Uh, these MMPR program uh, providers are going to be grinding all of their bud, the whole plant, minus the big stocks, okay? They're, they're obviously, you can't put in the big lump, okay? But they're, going, they're going to be grinding up the whole plant in and mixing it properly and selling it as cigarettes. But it'll be a crime to separate the leaf from the bud. And basically, what they're falling under is UCC rules and regulations for dried flowers. Okay, cannabis can be considered as a dried flower. Okay, and when you go to trim it, and that's now a drug. But for horticultural reasons, cannabis at the under the MMPR program is treating uh, the plant as if it's a dried flower. Okay, and the compassion clubs need to go along with this. Now, the vehicle for doing this is, under the Societies Act, uh, you're being pushed out, okay, because they're not going to give you the licenses to sell taxes, to, to collect taxes. And in order to collect taxes, you're going to have to compete with London Drugs on and with the same sources. And the reality is, is C Canadians deserve better. The MMAR program is guilty of working. That's the problem with the MM, what Death Canada's big problem with, with the, the MMAR program is that we, the people, actually made it work. 
okay? People go to their compassion clubs and they all have their own individual sets of suppliers and uh, they, uh, they're very loyal to their clubs. So very few people, you know, in Vancouver where there's eight, ten clubs, uh, people seem to be very loyal to stay with the people they originally signed up with. And it's a well-working institution that functions well. Everyone's claiming to have the best pot, and they all do. We're all from BC. It's very good pot here. And uh, there's an abundance of supply right now. And uh, prices are quite good at, at, at the compassion clubs. There's actually a, a big push for lower prices. Uh, it's a healthy economy. Uh, there doesn't seem to be great problems in BC. Uh, the feds are saying that you're going to have to stop growing uh, in houses and move to warehouses, which is great. Okay, and we'll also be able to grow in greenhouses. Okay, the rules and regulations for greenhouse growing in greenhouses was set a long time ago, and it's basically one perimeter fence. Cameras go looking in and and then a, a, a open field, another perimeter fence, and then a greenhouse behind that. Okay, uh, they're saying there's no going to be any outdoor grows, but greenhouses are going to be a viable way to grow pot for the dispensaries especially. And that can be done in rural areas because you need this double fence and open field situation. If anybody wants more detail on that, call me. Uh, we're available if that's okay. But in regard but we can also do grows. Okay? Now the preferred method for grows and being compliant with the government is in doing what's called sea of green. Uh, most people would be aware of what this is for a brief lesson, okay? Uh, you take one 1,000 watt lamp and you put one plant out of that. Uh, you put, doesn't matter if you put one plant, five plants, ten plants, or a hundred and sixty plants, you get about two, a pound and a half to the whole light, okay? It's, the, the poundage is geared by the light, okay? Sea of green is difficult to do under MMAR program things because all the plants, you're doing a four foot by four foot bed. Okay? You put one 1,000 watt light above it and you plant uh, uh, clones three and a half inches apart across the whole four by four bed. That's 160 plants. And as soon as the plants take, which is like two days after, you know, two or three days after you start growing, that you know you'll see the plant actually start sprouting. At that time, you drop to 12-hour plants, and for all intents and purposes, you're growing one bud that's about that long. Okay, okay, they're and they just it they only grow one bud. Okay, the, the fan leaves cross each other and you get what's called a sea of green. Every plant has about over, as a rule, over a quarter ounce and under a half an ounce per plant. Okay, now it, it's very efficient. You get a crop every, you knock 30 days off of the cycle, 30 to 60 days off the cycle. Okay, and it gives very good quality pot. And it's what, what's nice about it is there's very little leaf to the bud ratio. Okay, it's almost all bud. Okay, now by law, we're, the grower is not allowed to uh, trim this plant. Seriously, you're not allowed to trim it. Okay, from the source at the grow up, you're not allowed to trim it. So basically, uh, our intention is to have salmon packs you know like how we, we we process smoked salmon we put it in a shrink wrap thing and we suck the air out of it okay now the reality is is for the labeling requirements we have a card stock okay just a piece of card and on it you put all the specifications this is purple kush uh dried flowers it weighs 
0 0.135, 0 0.35 grams. It has a moisture content of this, uh, done in location here, uh, with a to total weight package of this, and you have exactly what they want, and you vacuum pack it at the grow up. Now the compassion club, now the person can look at that bud and he has to buy it and go home, open the package and trim it. It really isn't, doesn't take long to trim, but, and as long as you're selling the whole plant, you're well within the rules and regulations that the MMPR and the MMAR program says you can do. Okay? Uh, I personally believe that any club that tries to sell bud will get shut down. Okay? Now, the avenue for a club to sell pot is in, like, salmon packs of buds. And people can just look at it and just go, oh, I, they want an ounce, so they might have to buy four or five packs three or four and they can buy a big bud or a small bud but technically they're buying the whole plant but the plant only weighs a quarter ounce to a half ounce as a rule that's what sea of green produces which is cool we are actually selling the whole plant which is what health canada and ucc says you have to do and you know i'll be selling cookbooks right beside the the things because people will have their own shake and be able to do edibles from the leftovers and it's perfectly legal for the person to trim his plat bud and can and just roll the bud okay and it's something the health food stores won't be able to operate won't be able to do okay but so it's a marketing technique okay that's perfectly legal under the rules and regulations of health canada now, where they're going to stick it to you is that you aren't paying taxes, okay? They're, they're, they're go I find it very difficult to believe that they will actually give uh, pharmacy licenses to the clubs, and, allow, and I refuse to believe that they will allow them to sell that, okay? Uh, whole plant is the way to do it. The way the MMPR program is doing it apparently is through pre-rolled cigarettes, that are a blend of bud and shake. And to my understanding, they're doing it with Sea of Green in order to have as much bud with as little shake as possible. Okay? Because these guys want to sell their product. Okay? And it's the best way to make a the strongest bud is to do it through Sea of Green. Okay? Now, basically, the, the big issue is going, are you paying taxes? Now, that's where the Marijuana Party of Canada comes in. Okay, a compassion club. I'm organizing a series of compassion clubs here in Vancouver to become uh, co-ops. Okay, now under the election, in, instead of being under the Societies Act, they become a co-op, and it's a very simple form. It's a form on provincial government. You vacate one, and you open another. And it happens just overnight. The bookkeeping system from going from a society to a co-op are very similar. Okay. They're almost identical. Okay. Now, the fact is, uh, an EDA, a federal marijuana party EDA can operate as if with a book, with the book structure of a co-op. So we, Decert, you know, these clubs are decertifying under the Societies Act and reopening the next day under the Co-op Act. And this co-op is going to be run under an EDA of the Marijuana Party of Canada. Okay? Now, the reason you're doing that is one, uh, you get to share the profit. Okay? Co-ops, I mean, under the Societies Act, it's very difficult for a society to hide its profits with pot sales. It's very hard. Okay, some clubs are really, really slow and don't have the memberships and things. But you know, the a successful club really has uh, a problem spending the money that it generates under the rules and regulations of the Societies Act. Now they can take those coppers 
And technically, these clubs have only been open in Vancouver for a couple of years, the majority of them, well, a year to two years. And they can transfer that to the co-op when they close the books. Okay. Now, under the Co-op Act, okay, uh, see, the reason you're doing it under a political party is because a political party can collect sales, you know, uh, revenue uh, through what's called a party sales tax. Okay. Now, uh, under what's called the Longley loophole, uh, a political party can make a profit by promoting and protecting its beliefs as long as it's done through real good bookkeeping practices, standard bookkeeping practices that a co-op offers. Now, basically, what's being done, you, we're allowed to charge 10% party sales tax. And that means when they can't shut you down, okay, for not paying your taxes. And that's a big one, okay? Um, I'm convinced that the majority of compassion clubs are going to be shut down because they're not paying taxes and they're having to compete against London Drugs and the MMPR program that are paying taxes. Okay? And if the government doesn't give you a license to pay taxes, that's a, then you're getting the royal boot. Uh, they don't want you to benefit from that excellent service that people like under the MMAR program. Now, the Marijuana Party of Canada can hijack the entire MMAR program and say, we're taking it over. You're rejecting it? You don't want it? Great. We're taking it over. We operate our EDAs as if we're the head office of the MMAR. And we can issue licenses to our growers to grow Sea of Green. And let's, and it, it changes, okay? Sea of Green is the selling of the plant. And let's say someone has a quarter ounce, uh, uh, an MMAR requirement for a quarter ounce pot. Well, that means he's got 60, let's say, 60 uh, quarter ounce uh, plants on a sea of green. He's got, uh, for all intents and purposes, a third of one bed. Okay, and across the existing membership, uh, these clubs could afford uh, to have 40, 50 light operations. No problem at all. Okay, which is cool. And that would be necessary to supply their needs. They could prepackage the uh, salmon packs in the grow up and meet all the requirements there and send them through couriers or through the post office to the Compassion Club itself, which is operating under the Marijuana Party of Canada. And the requirement is to be a member. We're operating under the rules and regulations of the MMAR program. And uh, that allows us to have rules, structures, and what's really important, lots and lots and lots of court precedences that we can operate under. Uh, the one thing that they can't hit close you down for is uh, the paying of taxes. Okay, it doesn't mean they're not going to take you to court, but tax issues are taken at civil court. Okay, and civilly, uh, they'll sheriffs will come in, have to, because put it with this way. As soon as we start doing the process of changing over to a co-op, we're going to be sending notices of intent and notices of liability to the police officers and things like this. So advising them that under the old rules, this co-op, this grower had was, was, had this here. And from this day on, he is a grower for the co-op, for, for this co-op that was what it once was a society. You know, this guy's customer is still there and uh, we're covering him under our licenses and in the event that you don't like this uh, please be on note that you owe us uh, X number of dollars for every clone that you take and we just give them a schedule and we tell them you know we want to talk to you we want to work things out with you but in the event that you come in here and break our lights and cut our plants down uh, we're gonna sue you Okay, and it, we're giving them the, ski, the fee schedule of what we're going to sue them because they just can't do that. We're making an offer to negotiate, and the government, as a rule, just totally ignores those offers. But with a piece of paper saying, you know, here, we tried to talk to you. We told you where the grow-up was. It's the same spot it was before. 
okay? Or if you have to move to a commercial area, just advise them you're moving to a commercial area and uh, under the M a pseudo MMAR uh, license that's now operated through the Marijuana Party of Canada. And uh, well, we can meet all kinds of requirements. We don't want to sell drugs or narcotics, so uh, we'll sell a whole plant. And the idea of doing it through Sea Green really is good. Most people will catch on real fast that that really immediate close print is well worth smoking too. Okay, The pot will be a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. Take my word for it. it because it's not trimming. Someone has to compensate for the weight of, of, of the trim. And, but you know what? It'll be legal. Okay? They won't shut your clubs down, which is exactly what's happening right now. Clubs are going to be shut down. I'm sorry to say that, you know, but, you know, and basically, good books, you'll be saved, and changing to selling whole plant. And the most profitable way to do that, and most it, the, the, is see a green. Uh, what can I say? Uh, uh, the Marijuana Party of Canada is a vehicle that can be used, and uh, I strongly encourage you to read uh, this pamphlet here that I put up, reposted. I, I put it up last fall, and I reposted. It's quite good. And uh, just go to my Facebook wall site on uh, In Creation We Trust or Mark Boyer, and you know, the postings are there. Um, it's a good initiative, okay? Every EDA in Canada uh, would be able to collect 10% party sales tax. The 10, if, if and when they send you to court, a judge, it, it, it'll, it's a piece of cake for the, for the judge or the, the civil lawyer to use a defense that, Your Honor, uh, until this goes to court, we are actually in compliance with the, with the Revenue Canada Act and collecting taxes. And they'll go, oh, but we don't want that. And I'm sorry, Your Honor, the compliance is, are you, the marijuana party has a guarantee to protect our beliefs that you can't shit can the MMAR program, which we like and everybody wants and is guilty of nothing more than being very successful. So the clubs are going to have to change. Yes, okay. The selling of a, of a bud, uh, the is the time for being able to do that uh, as far as i'm concerned is written on the walls you no know, it's not going to last very long uh, clubs can maintain and stay open by re-registering under the co-op and being a political party and having uh introduce uh prepackaged uh sea of green beside the bud okay and if you want to take your chances that when the cops come in and go, oh, we have to stop selling the bud, okay, we'll stop selling the bud. But they'll still leave you open. But you know what? Personally, I'm not going to do, if someone wants to do that social experiment and end up in court over that, let them. And then as soon as they're allowed to sell bud, which I don't think will happen, okay? Uh, so personally, selling Sea of Green is by far the best way to market uh, in the new rules and regulations of Death Canada. Okay? And basically, 10% of our pot sales can go toward legal fees. And we're allowed to collect up to $10 billion of revenue to protect our beliefs. That's a recent Elections Canada concession that they've given us. Okay? So, that's $10 billion worth of pot. That's $100 million a year in potential income to the marijuana party. And that's more money for the next election than all the political parties combined in the history of Canada. Okay? And actually, this proposal to start these clubs is a direct assault of how to get rid of the Harper government and the bullshit government of what we are. Uh, what I'm promoting is nobody is above the law. As our, as, and that's all there is to it. Uh, what can I say? But that's another story. In the meantime, uh, read my initiatives uh, and get involved. Start an EDA. It can't hurt. Uh, and what can I say? Thank you very much.